E, how you doing? Justin here, back with you for a look at the A minor chord. There's a few interesting things going on here with this chord. Let's start off by looking at an A major chord. And then we've got to change it to an A minor chord. Look, all of the fingers have got to change. So slightly different from the E major to E minor, where you just lift a finger off. So here, we've got everything off. Second finger can kind of stay down. Third finger moves over and first finger goes down to get to our minor chord. Now, A major to A minor is a fairly rare kind of a chord change. It happens occasionally, but it's not a super common one. One that's more common is A minor to E, or A minor to E minor. Now, hopefully, you kind of recognize A minor if I'm playing it like that. Go, hang on, I've seen that one before, but it looks slightly different. You would be very right, it looks the same as E major, but on the wrong string. So there's A minor. If we move all of the fingers down one string, we get E major, not E minor. Okay, now this is one of the things that beginners sometimes get a bit confused about. They see this chord shape and they think, oh, that's an E, an E major. So that one, that has to be some sort of major as well. It's not. This one is A minor. Now, the reason for this is to do with the tuning of the instrument. I don't want to go into too much detail about it here. But if you've learned tuning using the, what they call the fifth fret technique, when you tune the B string, you go back a fret. So you go fifth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret, and then fifth fret again. The distance between the third string and the second string is ever so slightly smaller. The interval between the pitches is ever so slightly smaller. Now, because of that, when we move things down, any sort of guitar shape down on the guitar, it doesn't maintain the same quality. So major chords, if we've got a major shape like this and we move it down, it becomes a minor chord. If we've got a minor chord like this and we move it down, that becomes really, really weird. So it's not, you can't just move shapes willy-nilly on the guitar, unfortunately. So. Understanding that and knowing that, you want to know that the A minor chord, even though it looks like an E major chord, you want to remember that your first finger is on the second string for an A minor chord. That's the key thing, remembering your second finger is there, and also remember that it's the same three strings with fingers on as it was for the A major chord. There's A major chord again, there's A minor chord, A major, A minor. A nice way uh, you can see it really clearly is if you use your little finger. If you go from A minor and add your little finger down on the second string in the second fret, it's actually another way of playing an A major chord. It's not one that I recommend because the second finger, look, if I do that, all those three fingers together, you can see how far away second finger is from the second fret. It's like way far away. And being so far away, if we want that note to come out really clearly, we have to press really hard with the second finger, like really hard to make that chord work. Also, when you press really hard, it sometimes makes the strings go out of tune a bit. So there's all sorts of dangers. I definitely recommend this as being a generally a much better way of playing an A major chord. However, just so you can see easily the difference between the major and minor, you could play A minor like that and add little finger down. There's your A major. And then you can see again that change, that simple one note change to go from major to minor. This is the most common fingering for A minor, just using fingers one, two, and three. You might see people occasionally use fingers two, three, and four, but that's pretty rare. It's much more common one, two, and three. The common problems with the A minor are pretty much the same ones that we'd have with E. We don't want to be playing the thicker string with an A minor chord, but if you do play it by accident, it's not going to be too bad. We want the open string, the open fifth string. If that one's muted, it's almost certainly the fault of second finger being up a little bit too high and muting it. So just bring that second finger down, make sure you're using the tip of the finger. When we're getting that note right, because third finger's going right next to the fret, second finger's gonna have to be kind of in the middle of the fourth string, in, you know, halfway between the first fret and the second fret. You wanna get it as close as you can to the second fret, but because of the placement of the third finger, you won't get it right up there. Okay, so you might have to press slightly harder than you would uh, had it be right next to the fret. The note with the third finger on the third string, probably not too many are gonna have problems with that note. That's not a common one to have a, a funny note with. The note with the first finger though, again, third finger, it's very easy for third finger to lay down and mute the second string. So make sure the third finger is right up on the tip there. The first finger, again, if, if you're not hearing that note, it is the third finger's fault. 
the thinner string, if that's not ringing out, it's almost certainly the underneath of the first finger. And that's a really common problem. It's one that in, when I'm playing left-handed, I still have problems getting that note. Half the time it sounds like this, the, the thinner string is muted. So you really want to work on just trying to get the first finger right up on the tip there and trying to keep the fingers nice and round. That's the kind of tips for getting your A minor sounding really nice. As usual, you want to go for your chord perfect practice. You want to go for a strum, pick out the notes one at a time, and strum again. Okay, quite, again, quite likely this would be a common first attempt. Or even that. And then you go through, figure out what's going on. Literally, just going through, picking out the notes one at a time until you get it right, and then that final important strum at the end where you're going, telling your fingers that's where you want them to go for the future.